Hi everyone, my name is Helen Moons, and today I'm going to teach you how to add commands to your Spigot or Paper plugins. Uh, we're going to touch briefly on the plugin YML, as that is important for adding commands, as well as some important checks you need to do when creating your commands. So we're going to start with a new project, so uh, if you need help walking through this, check my previous video, but I'm just going to go through and do this real quick. So the first thing we're going to need to do, um, and this is not completely necessary, but it is good for an uh, organization of your plugins, um, is I'm going to add a new package here, which is just kind of like a folder that's going to contain all of our commands. So I'm going to add commands, and you'll notice we get a little folder here. Um, this is just going to contain all the classes that we make for each one of our commands. So for our command, we're going to add a new Java class, and I'm going to call this uh, clear command. And press enter, and we get our new class. We're going to implement another class uh, that is our template for our command, and then we're going to register that command with the server through the plugin YML and through a very similar process to uh, registering our listeners. And that'll allow us to then execute that command inside the game. So our clear command class here uh, implements a command executor. Okay. So you notice that this is uh, red and underlined, and that's because uh, we need to override the on command function. So if you're in IntelliJ, you can just do alt and insert or right click and go down to generate. And then we want to override methods and find this on command. So if we click that, we're going to get a whole mess of stuff. So this is what is going to run when we run our command. So we have a few uh, parameters we have access to. We have the sender which this can be either a player or the console of the server. So we're going to have to check for that, if, especially if you're doing something that affects the player, you need to make sure that you check that you are actually affecting a player. Um, we get the command that was run, um, which can be important. We're not going to touch on that today. Uh, you get a label for it, and you get a array of strings for the arguments so the arguments are going to be the you know your slash command space you know argument one space argument two etc 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 um an important thing to note here is we're returning false at the end of this command depending on what you return uh determines whether or not you get an error when you run that command and by that i mean um, if you return false, then it will tell the user automatically that um, the command wasn't understood and prints out the instructions, the usage instructions. If you return true, then it means that the command was accepted and nothing gets printed out to the user. Okay, so before we jump into the command here, I'm just going to do a quick bit of uh, dependency injection. I want... I want access to our main class here just so that I can call back and easily get to the logger so I can print out errors properly to the console. So I'm going to make a private final main main. This is going to and import that as well. And this is going to contain our reference to our main class. And then we're going to build a constructor. So public clear command yeah public clear command we're going to take in the main here as a parameter and then we're just going to say this dot main and the this keyword just means the one here and not this one right so this refers to this and not to this that's kind of confusing but um yep so this just sets whatever our parameter here to this up here so now we have access to this main variable that we can use inside of our command okay 
So one of the first things we, we need to do is make sure that our sender is a player and not the console because the console doesn't have an inventory for us to clear. So the first thing we're going to do is have an if statement for if sender instance of player. And we'll import that. So if this is true, then whoever typed in the command was a player. If it's false, then it was a... If it's false, then it was the, the console that sent in this command. If it was the console, we'll just reference our main here, get our logger, and then we're just going to say dot info, which is just going to, it's essentially just printing out to the console. Um, and this will automatically add our little, uh, our plugin name as a tag. So we don't have to handle any of that ourselves. Um, so we're just going to say you have to be a player to clear your inventory. And then we're going to return true because otherwise it would send an error. It would send both this and an error into the console, which we don't want. So we'll just get rid of this return false since we don't need it anymore. Now that we know that we have a player, we can save a variable for that. So we can say player, player equals player sender. So what this line does is cast our command sender sender object here as a player. So we have access to all the stuff that a player would have. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't have access to things like the inventory and the level and things of that nature. So now that we have the player, we need to do a couple important checks before we just go ahead and clear the inventory of the player. This technically would work. If we put the code in that clears the inventory, it would clear the inventory. The problem is, is that it would work for everybody, regardless of permissions, regardless of um, operator status on the server, uh, things like that. So that's what we're going to check here next. We're going to say if player dot is op. So if they're a server operator, or which is those those two lines there, um, player dot has permission, and we'll say clear inventory as the permission. So if they have the permission clear inventory or they are OP, then we will get the player's inventory and clear it. So let's do that now. So we'll make a new variable called inventory and that will be equal to player.getInventory. And we can go ahead and import that. Um, and then we can say inventory.clear. Now, one last thing that we should do is we should probably go ahead and inform the user that we have cleared their inventory. So we'll just say player dot send a message. And we can do some chat colors in here as well. So we'll say chat color dot green plus, and we'll have to import that chat color. And we'll say, uh, your inventory has been cleared. And then the last thing we'll do is we will return true because all the checks passed and we've done what we needed to do uh, so we can break out. Okay. So one more thing to do here is we can go in here and we can add an else here for if they're not OP or the player doesn't have the permission. And we can just say um, player.send a message you don't have the required permission to use this command and maybe we'll make this red as well so we'll do chat color dot red uh and real quick i almost forgot um we're going to need to return true here as well so at this point this command is done it checks if we are a player or a console if we are a player, it checks if we have the required permission, gets our inventory, clears it, and lets the, the player know that their inventory has been cleared. Otherwise, it will tell us we don't have permission right here to use the command. And 
If we are a console, it'll just let us know that we have to be a player. While the command is done, we're not entirely done with implementing the command to the server because currently the server doesn't know what this command is or how to run it. So let's go ahead over to our main class here and let's implement registering the command with our server. So we're going to say get server dot get plugin command. And here we'll type in clear because that's the command we want to use dot set executor. And we'll say new and we'll reference our command class, which in this case is clear command. So say new clear command and we'll import that. And we're going to need to give it the, this keyword just so, um, our command has access to our main, uh, and that's it. We've now registered the command with the server. There's only one more step and that is to add the command to our plugin YML. So if we go under resources here, we'll see plugin.yml. This is where things like your version come in. Um, the name can be changed here. Make sure this main points to your actual main class, things like that. Uh, so we're going to add a line here and we're going to say commands, uh, colon, press enter and we'll notice we'll tab in a little bit and we'll say clear. So that's the name of the command. Make sure that bit here matches what you put in here. Uh, and then inside of there, we can add a few things like description. And this will say, uh, clears the user's inventory. We'll add, um, usage, which will say slash and brackets command. So what this does is it automatically fills in the command name in this case, clear. So once we have a description and usage, uh, our command is now complete. Uh, the server knows about it and we can then run it in the game. So let's go ahead and come over here to our Maven, our life cycle, and we're going to click package and we're going to load up Minecraft and the server and test our plugin. So if we do slash plugins, we should see our plugin available now and we can say slash clear your inventory has been cleared. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple items to our inventory so we can see it working. Uh, cobblestone and I'll put, I don't know, like 1024 in my inventory, right? So we can say slash clear and all of our, uh, items are gone. Let me go ahead and pull the server over here. If I type in. Uh, clear and press enter. It says commands tutorial. This is because we use the, the logger to, uh, send this message. And it says, uh, you have to be a player to clear your inventory. So that is our command working. There's a lot more that you can do with commands. Commands are very powerful. Uh, you can add auto completion. Uh, that is like when you type in slash give and you can see all these options pop up and then you can just press tab to autofill. Um, that is possible. Uh, I will make a tutorial on that sometime soon. Um, you can add aliases. So multiple, uh, different, uh, commands for, or multiple different, you can add multiple different executors for the same command. For instance, uh, we could do slash clear. We could add one for clear INV for clear inventory for slash C, etc., And they would all run that same class that we made. Uh, you can also do things with arguments, uh, as well. So taking in extra information past the command, for instance, like the player to effect, uh, and things like that. I will do a short tutorial on that shortly after this one. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, the last thing I want to point out is, uh, a couple resources 
for you guys when you are working on plugins. You can hop into my Discord and I would be happy to help you or someone else would be happy to help you. Uh, we usually get back to you pretty quickly, uh, usually within the same day, um, to help you with your plugins. There are no uh, stupid questions or anything like that. Feel free to come in and ask anything. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help you. Second, check out the Spigot forums. There's tons of people who have asked very similar questions and gotten really great responses uh, from very knowledgeable people usually with great code examples for you to read through. Um, so don't be afraid to Google things. And third, make sure you check out the Spigot docs. Uh, I can do a tutorial on how to read the Spigot docs and Java docs in general, uh, but they should give you a pretty good idea as to what functions you have available when you're using certain types of, of data and, uh, you know, what functions require what parameters and things of that nature. So I hope this has been informative. I hope that you've learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or come find me in my Discord. I'd love to meet you and say hi. Uh, anyway, have a good one. Thanks.